So a few fundamentals about rigid bodies before we begin. Uh, the first one is that if we bring up our preferences, under my key map, I have my spacebar action set to search. Some people have it set to play or tools, but I actually have mine set to search along with left click to select just to, you know, preface this video. So I'll press spacebar and I'm able to search for things and I could just type in rigid bodies. I'm not going to go into it just yet, but that's really my fast way of just getting to rigid bodies. So we'll shift A and we'll add a plane and we'll just scale this plane by 10 and press G, Z minus one to move this down exactly one blender unit. And with the spacebar menu, we'll just search for a rigid and we'll choose add rigid bodies, but we'll use the F9 option to make this a passive so that way the plane isn't falling. And then we can select the cube and we can actually use the spacebar again to add rigid bodies. And this time we'll make it active. And so if we were to take this cube and place it up in the air, it will now fall. And that's really all there is to it when it comes to rigid bodies. The other thing to keep in mind is that, you know, when dealing with rigid bodies, the physics can get a little bit wonky when there's parenting involved. So I also want to let it be known that under the behavior panel of box cutter is an option called parent shape. And if you're cutting with parent shape on the shapes are going to be parented to the target and this is going to make your simulations go haywire and this has been enabled by default 4716 but may be problematic with cutting with rigid bodies we weren't expecting a lot of people to go into rigid bodies but in the event that you're cutting that way you may want to cut without parent shape on and the other thing is that i have found personally that cutting with destructive mode on is actually a better result when cutting in slice i could just slice and destructive with parent shapes off and this shape should you know get very interesting very fast in fact we'll just select it do some slices i kind of missed the option for managing the selection after a slice was made sometimes okay actually it is there so we've cut this shape and if we press control spacebar it just explodes into pieces and we can actually alleviate this a little bit as far as making it a more accurate simulation by selecting everything and then from spacebar adding rigid bodies again and whenever you use it this method it actually will set the i believe mass for it under the physics settings let's see physics is right here and it looks like we didn't get the automatic physics setting the other thing is that whenever you're simulating these things, uh, using convex hull is a, definitely a faster method. However, sometimes I'll make a selection and choose to set it to mesh and then right click and set it to, um, let's see, what was it assigned to? Oh, copy to selected. And so now we actually have something a little bit more accurate. However, it's just kind of jumping apart. And then of course, since we're you know still in box cutter mode, we can select everything again Maybe even switch it over to Ngon and just do a very large multi-cut. Um, we, we put a lot into ensuring that these particular maneuvers should take place without problem. The other thing is also the origins. I forgot to even discuss origins, but we will just make a few slices, just cut these into separate objects. And then with everything selected, we can press Shift S and, and since I'm using snapping pies, I can just choose origin to geometry and now things will come apart the way it's supposed to. And this is a really fun way to just kind of get into box cutter and to start playing around with things. Just play with rigid bodies and just cut things up and just see what happens. And you know, there's also more to it. I mean, whenever I show physics, I tend to turn gravity off. So things just explode free of gravity as a constraint. And then under rigid body world, you can begin playing with some other things like speed. We'll set this to 0 0.002 and it still is exploding at full speed, maybe 0 0.002. And we'll just leave everything else where it is. And we turn gravity back on. And this is basically the result that we're getting, which looks a little unusual. Let's change our speed back to one. And that is what one gets us. If we change this to eight, it just finishes so fast, 0 0.02. And maybe turn on split impulse. 
and that is the result that I'm wanting to see. You know, just kind of this slow explosion of just rigid body pieces. And I think at the beginning there's a little bit of a like a time quake that happened there. So I bet we can actually fix that by giving it more solver iterations. Nope, not going to do it there. Maybe 120. Maybe give them both 120. I'm on a 99 now, so we could really experiment with these settings. You have maybe 256 just to get really weird. And there we are looking at our physics simulation of this cube just exploding. And that's within just six minutes of just getting in here and talking about the fundamentals of physics as well as um, box cutter and basic usage. So I hope you guys get in there, dice some things and make them explode in place in time.